paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Britain is brimming with hoarders. Piles and piles and piles of clothes. There's the body in here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Their collecting is catastrophic. This has never been worn. This is brand new. And they're drowning under clutter. But help is at hand. It's awful. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Collectibles expert Curtis Dowling will work out what's worth cashing in. Already, just in that box, you've got about 70, 80 pounds. Yes. Blunt question, is it something you'd buy off me? While Queens of Clean Joanna Riley and Marion Kamak will sort out what to keep and what to chuck. How can you have a life in this clutter? Unwrapped Christmas present. Clearing rooms for the first time in years. Amazing! It's fantastic, aren't you pleased? Yeah, I am pleased, actually. No one said it would be easy. I think I've got my work cut out here. So can our hoarders part with their possessions? I don't want to keep that. It's priceless. And reclaim their homes for good. Why isn't he on your mantelpiece? This is the thing. Today we're in Lincolnshire with a couple who downsized two years ago and still haven't unpacked. Cardboard city in here. And they are faced with some tough decisions if they're to raise those readies. So why get rid of them now? We haven't got the room and I need the money to sort out the back garden. And we'll be with teacher Anne, who's overwhelmed by a hoard inherited from her father. Why it is cluttered, I'm not sure, but I can hardly get me bed these days. She has no idea what she owns. You have no idea what's inside this? No. OK. So can she bring herself to part with her possessions? I'm a little bit sentimental about it, cos it's my dad's stuff. Today, our SOS team is heading to Newcastle to help teacher Anne declutter her heaps of inherited items. I'm feeling a little intimidated by it at the moment, cos there's so much of it. But first, we're in Lincolnshire. Meet craft artist Tracy and husband IT consultant Richard. They moved into their bungalow two years ago. We downsized from a three-bedroom, three-storey townhouse that had a garage and a fourth room at the bottom, and all of it was full of stuff. And all that stuff has ended up in the kitchen, the living room and Tracy's craft room, with nowhere to go. As you can see, I'm sort of squeezing between things and I'm scared I'm going to knock something over. Richard spends a lot of his time in the shed. You want to see my man cave? <laughs> With the place so cluttered, they don't even have room to sit together. I miss me cuddles. That's one of the benefits of decluttering. I can sit next to my husband and get a cuddle. This cuddleless couple are boxed in by boxes and now they need help. I do, I need a lot of help. <laughs> lots and lots of help. <laughs> Time to bring in our two experts. I'm excited about this one. With 25 years' experience as an antiques valuer, Curtis hopes to find items he can sell. Let's get in and bring get started. This is your home. Hi, I'm Tracy. Oh, I'm Joanna. And as Joanna runs a successful cleaning business, she's here to help declutter Tracy and Richard's home. Oh, very busy in here. As I unpacked and I didn't know where to put something, it got put there for now. Uh, oh, so it's for the now shelf. Needs to go. It needs to go. Yep, it does. On to the rest of the bungalow. Uh, this is the living room. A few bits and bobs. Think you're being kind there. Curtis heads for Richard's man cave. No, not there. Or there. Oh, boxes of paperwork outside. Wrong again. That's the one. It works. And Joanna's taking on the living room. I think I've got my work cut out here. There's got to be 30 glasses in there. Well, they're boxed up, so maybe they're ready to be sold. Uh, no, unpacked. So who's the main culprit at hoarding? 
think most of it is Tracy's craft stuff, but um, we do we both have a lot of stuff that we probably don't need. Some of it's paperwork, some of it's magazines. Locked. <laughs> I like my DVDs, my films. Even if we never watch them. I do watch them. OK. Oh, the craft room is the most untidy and cluttered room in the house. I think I'm going to have to be quite firm with Tracy. If I can go into that room and use it, it would be 100% better for me. Right, better get to work then. Another empty drawer. Alongside a clutter-free home, Tracy and Richard are after a new patio which will cost about £400. Perhaps these could kick-start the fund. How come you've got all these tour programmes from famous rock bands? Um, I used to work at the Mayfair in Newcastle when the bands were on. I used to, me and my friend used to get in free if we stood at front of house selling the programmes when everybody was coming in. Is that the greatest job in the world for yeah. a young girl? Yeah. Most of these programmes are signed. Almost all autographed rock memorabilia increases in value over time, but the exact amount depends on the popularity and demand for that particular band. Are you happy to get rid of all these? Yeah. Right, the fantastic Iron Maiden. Yep, huge Iron Maiden fan. Big Bruce fan. You see? I've brought out the 17-year-old girl in you. <laughs> Are you fluttering? Yes. Even now? Even when it seem like that. So if he walked in here now, you'd still... <sighs> mm -hmm. ..have a swoon. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm going to shut that, hadn't I? Mm -hmm. Moving on to the big boys now. If one of these has got all the signatures in, could be three or four hundred. So I think on the table there, you've got a bit of a lovely garden. Mm. That's a lot of patio slabs mm. and a few days' work yeah. for your gardener, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. But you're definitely happy to get rid of them. Yeah, definitely. God, you're a brave woman. It's an excellent start. Now it's time for Tracy to take a look at that craft room with Joanna. So tell me, what's your vision for this room? Um, to be able to walk in, clear floor, yes. straight to my desk, Okay. get out what I want, do my job, put it all back again. What kind of help do you need? I need your expertise yes. in making every inch of this room work. OK, because at the moment, it doesn't. Bit of an understatement there. While Joanna comes up with a plan of action, Curtis has found something else to sell on the For Now shelf, a Wedgwood plate. It's in perfect condition, and we've got a global market with the internet now, haven't we? Yeah. But I imagine something like that is still probably £15. That's all right. Well... It's one other thing to sell to get the garden done, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's a, a couple of slabs. There we are. That's <laughs> the way to say it. Yeah, I'm holding two slabs in my hand. <laughs> Tracy has dug out something else in the living room that she hopes will breathe fire into her accounts. What's the fixation with dragons, then? Um, I used to have a pet lizard, and um, I like the way it moved and wriggled. So why get rid of them now? We haven't got the room. And I need the money to sort, to sort out the back garden. First up, the two larger green dragons. What would you pay for them? Do you remember? I paid £44 for those. For the pair? Mm. Yeah, oh. a bit of damage on the tail. Yeah, damage always knocks the value of things, it does, doesn't it, it does. to be honest? When I dust them, I stroke them. <laughs> Do they purr? Well, let's look at these, then. They're resin. Yep. 15 quid each. So how many of the resin ones do you have? Six or seven. Tracy paid about £300 for all the dragons going back 20 years. But how much does Curtis think she'll get now? For the, the, the seven resin and the two dragons, yeah. we could come back with £70 or £80. Yeah. If you're happy with that figure and you're happy to let them go, yeah. then I'll do my best to get that for you. Well, the dragons could help, but the main earners are likely to be those rock programmes. Now, they do have value because people are still collecting signatures and programmes of rock music. I'd like to think they don't do too bad on them. So, with the aim to raise some cash for that garden patio, Curtis is ready to skedaddle off with a Wedgwood plate, the dragons and Tracy's rock programmes, amongst other treasures. There is a lot of stuff in there, especially in the craft room, but I don't know whether or not Tracy wants to let go of a lot of that stuff. These boxes are stopping her walking around her own home. I think this is actually a hazard. Yes. As opposed to just a nuisance. You better crack on.
Enjoy the sun. Yeah. I'm off to work. Enjoy Proper yourself. Proper work. Have fun. No slacking for you, Curtis. You have work to do too. So while Joanna stays behind to plan what to keep and what to clear out, Curtis has brought Tracy's dragons to a dealer at an antiques market. Now, will Dave bite? I've got a few bits to look at, Dave. Oh, well, a few dragons. I've got two green porcelain dragons. Yeah, they're nice. Ooh, looking positive. And then there's all these heavy red yeah, they're nice. They're in their presentation yeah. boxes, aren't they? But something you could sell? Oh, uh, depending what, what you want. That's what I'm coming down to, yeah. So there's six red. Yep. So let's do them as a separate entity. Yeah, right. She won't let them go for less than a tenner each. Tenner each. No good. No good at no all? No good at all. No good at all. What were you thinking? Like, to me, they was like two quid each. Two? Yeah. OK. Yeah, that, yeah what I'll, I'll pay for them. Yikes. OK, and... Yeah. Right, so we're going to struggle on the green one. Mm -hmm. Definitely are. Yeah. She wants 45 quid for them. No way. That's what I thought. No way at all. Yeah. I saw it in your face. Yeah. I, I wouldn't pay that for them. Right, no. OK. Could, there ain't nothing in it. Wedgewood plate? No, no good to me. No, I didn't think it was no, going to be, but I thought I'd get it out. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Oh, dear. Dave didn't want these dragons. I guess I'm going to have to speak to Tracy and see if she'll reduce the price. We shall see. Tracy and Richard are not the only hoarders seeking help from our experts. Meet teacher Anne. She leads a very busy life teaching, looking after her grandchildren and caring for her pets. So sorting through her hoard has been put on hold for almost 18 years. She lives in this three-bed semi with dogs Ezra and Nico, Emily the rabbit, and a whole load of clutter inherited from her late father. Oh, she'd have one of those, shouldn't they? Walk looks. The living room has filled up. Everywhere there's space, there's clutter. There's virtually no room to sleep in the bedroom. Why it's as cluttered, I'm not sure. But I can hardly get in bed these days. She can't even reach her clothes. I've got what I class as junk, really. Three Christmas trees, three desktop computer bases. And her garage is overflowing with heaps of clutter also inherited from her late father, including two pianos. She needs help pronto. Luckily, Curtis is on his way. I think we're here. What's in store? Something exciting, I hope. I hope so. And he's brought along B&B manager and housekeeper Marianne, who knows a thing or two about decluttering. Oh, hello. Come on in. Hi, Anne. Well, I mean, if I can get in. Just about managed. Just a little bit You're squishy. <laughs> right. Right. Would you like to come and look at the bedroom? I'd and love to. Curtis, could you go and look in the garage? I'm on the way. Anne's garage is stuffed full of family heirlooms, so is the most likely place for Curtis to find anything to sell. If there's anything of value here. Right. Piano. Terrible condition. It's probably 1890s, 1880s. Just not a lot of value. That's the problem. But pretty soon, Curtis finds something intriguing. <laughs> Look at that! It's an old World War I shell. It's called Shell Art. That's fascinating. Love it. I think it's time... <laughs> I went and got the lady of the house to speak to her about all her little hidden treasures. Let me tell you what I found. Yep. First thing, well, we might as well start here. OK. Where did that come from? That was... It had the porters and things in beside the coal fire. Right. Do you know what it is? A coal scuttle? Well, actually, it's a World War I shell. Wow. <laughs> That's what it actually is, picked up off the battlefield. So this is shell art right. from the First World War. And if you look, France, 1919. And these things, they're not horrendously valuable, yeah. but they are collectible. So, with your permission, I'd like to take that away and sell it for you. Yeah? I can't promise you a lot of money, 
but I can promise you a bit of money. Any idea how much? Uh, let's be conservative and say if I could get you 15, 20 pounds, yeah. it all helps, doesn't it? It does. Still to come, Curtis finds more inherited treasures in Anne's garage. You have no idea what's inside this? No. OK. And Tracy leaves Joanna to get on with the clear out on her own. Be cut alone. In Lincolnshire, Joanna's helping Tracy and Richard decide how to get rid of their mountain of boxes. What kind of help do you need? I need your expertise yes. in making every inch of this room work. And near Newcastle, Antiques Maestro Curtis is discovering inherited treasures in Anne's garage she never knew she had. He's found Anne's shell art, and now there's more. The other thing that I found that's really interesting... What's this? That is a table. Is it? Was anybody in your family an undertaker? Not that I know of. So it's a coffin stall? Really? Yeah. You put coffins on it. So you have three or four lined up. Eek. So this has got a bit of a value. You know, it's interesting. It's a bit of social history again. And if you can give it a quick rub down and a bit of a clean up, even if we can get 15, 20 pounds for it, then it's 15, 20 pounds more than you had to start with. Yeah. And there's something else. You have no idea what's inside this? No. OK. It's all royal stuff. Wow. Queen's Coronation scrapbook, yeah. and it's a proper scrapbook. Someone's really is, lovingly yeah. done this in 1953. I have never seen that. Look at that. Isn't that great? Bit of social history there. And then you've got this terrific magazine, The Sphere, well, from 1935, 36. Individually, there's not an awful lot of value. But as a collection, once again, there's a few pounds in here. Now, this is a rare one. Anne's garage is full of treasures. Now, I'm not saying they're worth a fortune, but they are fascinating. And collectively, they could get us some reasonable money. So far, so good in the garage. But inside, it's a different story, with the bedroom, living room and craft room stuffed with household clutter. Marianne kicks off things in the bedroom. <sighs> Time to bring Anne in. Right, and let's open that bag up. This is for the rubbish. We're going to get on here, cos this has really got out of hand and I want to be a bit harsh with it. Right, so if we start here, what about this toothbrush you want to keep? Bin it. Bin it? It's not... not useful. Bin it? Yeah, go. Cool. Marianne's plan is to work out what's rubbish and what items are just in the wrong place. Look, I mean, what's all this about? Little jobs I do around. Yeah, but not in the bedroom. No, I know. So what do you want to do with it? Should keep, we put that down here for keep now? Us, because yeah. you're going to... I'll put it somewhere. You should really go in the shed. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm being quite brutal because we cannot have all this keep piling up like this. Marianne's being firm, but her plan to sort through item by item is working. Am I being bossy? <laughs> Just a little. But there's still a long way to go. Excellent. Curtis, meanwhile, has finished gathering up several of Anne's inherited treasures that he'd like to try and sell. How do you think Anne got into this position? Basically, her lifestyle is hectic, so everything else has just gone by the wayside. So it's just built up, God. along with the dust. There's plenty of that. <sighs> Have I got my elbow grease cut out to clean that? But I will get there. It's basically put them in a box, clear them out, she's happy to let them go, and... Bob, your uncle. We're done. I'm going to go and take that stuff and see if I can sell it. I'll let you get back to, um... I think I'll have a lie down before I start. I think you probably need it. Marianne's staying behind to help Anne continue clearing out her bedroom. Curtis has come to an antiques market in Glasgow where he hopes to sell Anne's shell art to dealer Joe. Nice piece of trench art. Well, it's from an 18-pounder. It's 1919. And apparently... Military items bought and sold. So wish me luck. Good luck, Curtis. Bit of trench art. I don't see too much of it in these fair hours. The lady that owns this, she wants to sell it. And I wondered if you're interested. Aye. I'm interested in it. OK. Mm -hmm. Right, cheers up. Well, I think I should get 20 quid for it. 15 to better. 
You're a man that drives a hard bargain, right? I thought you meant 11. OK, well, I'll tell you what. Let's say 15. Well, it's a promising start for Anne. So, I've sold Anne's trench art. Now, I said to Joe I wanted £20. Sold it for 15. He thought it was getting a bargain. Uh-uh. Anne was the winner here. She got what she wanted, £15. Everybody's happy. In Lincolnshire, craft artist Tracy and husband Richard still have a mountain of boxes to sort in her craft room. As both have health issues, it's difficult to get started, but luckily, Joanna is here. What's the idea with the, the stuff in the boxes? Are you hoping to sell it? What happens is um, I demonstrate for a company yeah. what's left over. We keep for up to a year in case oh, the okay. store asks us to come back and se sell on something. Yeah. So you can't get rid of the, the stuff. You no. need to keep it. Yes. OK. Is it just the help that you need? Yeah. It's physically lifting these out and having somewhere to put them to sort them out thoroughly. I keep doing one box at a time, but then you blink and there's more boxes. That's amazing. You're putting your best foot forward, you're doing one box at a time, but I suppose the busier you get with your work, the yeah. more boxes come in. So Every it's two vicious... months. No wonder you're buried, Tracy. I can really sympathise with Tracy, but she also needs to make a decision to get rid of a lot of the stuff so she can be more mobile around the house. It would be nice not to see clutter everywhere. You'd be happier, cos I'll be happier. Yeah. If, if Tracy's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> As Tracy has chronic health problems, Joanna's plan in this case is to start clearing some boxes alone while Tracy rests. Do you want me to crack on? Yeah, you can do. See, see you later. Bye. Bye. I've got a mammoth task here. This is the first. Declutter loner. They've given me hope that they can help me declutter. That's the idea, fingers crossed. So having made a start, Joanna leaves Tracy and Richard to go it alone. With a clear plan for the craft room to remove the boxes and put similar items together in storage containers. I think Tracy is going to need lots more of them. I'm looking forward to finally getting to see the floor in there again and maybe get to the desk and actually do some crafting. Still to come, Marianne continues her battle in Anne's bedroom. Horsey books, do you want to keep them? Some of them, yes. And Curtis tries auctioning off Tracy's rock programmes. £600? It really is a finger in the air for this one. Near Newcastle, cleaning guru Marianne is helping teacher Anne clear out her cluttered bedroom. I'm going to get on here because this has really got out of hand. But there's still a long way to go. While back in Lincolnshire, Joanna has started the enormous task of emptying Tracy and Richard's boxes. Boxes? Cardboard city in here. Joanna's left the pair with instructions to clear a space in the corridor so they have room to move the boxes out of Tracy's craft room and then work out where to restore what they want to keep. Oh, looks like we've got an empty box. I think we'll sell this one. Richard's created sell it and clear it out areas in the garden. The mix of keep and sell in there. This needs to go in the for sale pile outside. Meanwhile, Trace is tackling the boxes one at a time. What I'm doing here is I'm sorting out products so they're all in the same box, so when they're in the back of my craft room, I'll know exactly where they all are. That one there. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, and a cat walking lead. We don't have a cat. In one of the boxes was Gordon the Gargoyle. Tracy's Catwoman hat. That's another box empty. That's how easy it is. Uh, but that can go in the bedroom. Two damn ten million to go. With the corridor finally tidy, now the big job can begin, clearing the rest of the craft room. Up in Scotland, Curtis is gearing himself up for another go at selling Tracy's dragons. This time, he's armed with just the resin ones and fancies his chances with Dealer Joe. A symbol of prosperity and success, Joe. Do you think you got a market for these? Do you think you'd sell them? Oh, I. Oh, I. It depends on the price, but. Oh, of course it does. Yeah. I mean, what would you sell something like this for generally? Well, I would try for a tenner a piece, roughly. So, 
I mean, I know what I've got to get for them. I'm not going to let them go for nothing, because they are. They, these were expensive when Tracy bought them. Oh, of course. I mean, so. I know she knows she's never going to get her money back, but she's loved them and she's had her money's worth. I want six each for them. Should we shout 30, shout 30, I'll give you a discount, call it 35. Thank you. Smash him. 20, 30, 35. Here you are. Hmm, generous discount, Curtis. Well, Tracy's going to be delighted. Resin figures sold, £35. I'm delighted. Near Newcastle, Marianne's pushing on with decluttering Anne's bedroom. The good news is they've cleared some space, but now another problem has emerged. I just don't get how the dust has accumulated in it. There must be <laughs> ten years' worth of dust in it. <sighs> Not really. <laughs> I do dust quite regularly, but once every, like, couple of months? I would have said more like every couple of years, and that's putting that generously. The dust and clutter really took hold after Anne's dad, Billy, passed away 18 years ago. All of my dad's stuff went to my sister's house. And then when my sister split with her partner, we brought it all to my house and squeezed it in where we could. But it's never moved in 18 years. I'm a little bit sentimental about it because it's my dad's stuff. Because even talking about my dad, I could get upset about it. Anne's dad worked as a draftsman for the National Coal Board and designed extensions to his mother's house in his spare time. He was brilliant. He didn't realise his own talent, though. And he did take his time, his attention to detail, which is something that I've not inherited, I'm afraid. He was a very good dad, the best. He was my busy mate. Since he died, the clutter has spiralled out of control. But Marianne's determined to help Anne sort the hoard. Anne's great. Lovely, kind-natured person because she loves her animals. She looks after her grandchildren. She's a teacher. I don't think there's time for anything else. So that's why the house has got like it is. Now she appreciates time to move on and get rid of it all. With Marianne leading the way, Anne's already made enormous progress in the bedroom, identifying which items to keep and which to clear. Right, I'm going to grab this. You're going to grab that. Yep. Now she's left her with a clear plan to keep ruthlessly clearing through all her clutter, one item at a time. But it remains to be seen if Anne can bring herself to let go of all her sentimental family items. In Lincolnshire, Tracy and Richard are poised to empty Tracy's craft room of boxes once and for all. And they have some help. There's a lot more room in here than we thought. Boxes are being taken from here. But Tracy will be well chuffed, not having to climb over things to get to stuff that she wants to craft with. Many of these boxes have not been unpacked since they moved in nearly two years ago. Last one. After a concerted effort and some dedicated heaving, finally some long overdue space emerges. Good result, definitely. And Tracy can't resist a sneak peek. Yay, I can see carpets. Woohoo! I can turn around in my room with my sticks. Yay, space! I'm actually in front of my desk. I can get to what's in those boxes and put them into the empty cubes that are in the, um, the units here. That was my problem before, I couldn't get to them. So now I can get to them, I can unpack. Pop the envelopes in the envelope box, pop the card in the card box. We've been here nearly two years. I sorted as much of the house out as I could, and then this came last, so finally I get something for myself. Found some stuff to get rid of. Uh, and quite a bit of rubbish, I think. <laughs> Rubbish that um, could have been got rid of a long time ago, but we just didn't know it was there. Good day all then, definitely. Come here, my magic fairy. <laughs> Thank you. That's one happy Tracy. With the rubbish sorted, Richard loads up, finally getting rid of it once and for all. While their clutter's getting the heave, Curtis is on a mission to sell some more of their items. He's at an auction, hoping to strike it lucky with Tracy's rock programs. 
Trace is put on a reserve of £600. And we go straight on now. We have a collection of rock programmes here, including Sign Slade. I don't think it's, it's the right place to be today. £85. I've, I've got to go 90. 95, 100 I've got. 110, 110, now at 110 I've got some. Yeah, get this G4, it's going back to Tracy. Come straight in at 200 pounds now. At 200. At 200 pounds. You all done down here. At 200 of you all finish now at 200 and I sell at 200 pounds. In fact, they don't sell. The programmes haven't met their reserve. That's horrendous. But Curtis isn't giving up. It was worth giving Tracy's programmes a try at a general auction, but they didn't meet the reserve that she wanted. We want to get the best price possible. So I think the idea is we break them up and we sell them individually. That just might work. Over the next few months, Tracy and Richard continue to declutter their bungalow and are now preparing for a visit from Joanna. We've worked really hard and we hope Joanna notices what the difference. Hopefully she will. I think she'll be pretty pleased with us, so might get a gold star, might not. Don't know. Tracy has just a few last-minute tweaks to make, ready for Joanna's arrival. Only me! And to give them their cash for clutter total so far. I'm grand, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. Are you pleased to see me? Yes, I am. Am I going to see some decluttered rooms in yes. this house today? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah? Five months ago, Tracy and Richard's bungalow was a hazardous assault course of clutter, ornaments and boxes, which had not been unpacked since they'd moved. Tracy's craft room was the worst offender, with so many boxes piled up you couldn't even get in. But now the space has been cleared and organised, with everything filed away in Tracy's special craft shelves so she can find what she needs when she needs it. What room's this? Craft room. You are kidding me. We couldn't get in, we were like this. Yeah. We were like little ants at the door. What's it like to have your craft room back? Lovely. Lovely. I can come away from the living room. Yes. Have me own peace and quiet. Put the fan on, sit and craft. I'm very, very, very impressed. You have done yourself. Yeah. High five. Despite poor health, Tracy and Richard have turned this bungalow around. The kitchen was previously dominated by the for now shelf, where everything was put for for now until it was so full it was ready to topple over. But now the room is sparkling and those shelves have been cleared and ordered so it's a usable, fresh and light space. It's organised, Richard. That's the main thing. I remember my last visit, I was quite concerned with all the stuff on the floor and it was quite unsafe for Tracy to walk around on her crutches. But now things are clear. You guys have got your kitchen back. I'm impressed. Tracy and Richard have managed to clear out one table to recycling, three bin bags to charity, eight boxes for the bin and 16 boxes of stuff to sell. Tracy, Richard, I'm really impressed with all the work that you've done. How's the process been for you? Hard work. Hard work, but it's we've got something good at the end of it, so it's worth doing. Curtis took some of your possessions away to be sold. He's been busy selling and he managed to raise a grand total of £311. And I believe you guys have had the selling book as well. Yeah. And you've raised £125, so it's a grand total of £436. Brilliant. So a cash for clutter total of £436, partly due to the online sales of Tracy's Green Dragons for £45 and her Iron Maiden programmes, which fetched an excellent total of £200, along with other bits and pieces. And Tracy has another 10 desirable 80s-era rock and roll programmes to sell, which will hopefully raise some more money to go towards revamping their garden. Yes, we've raised money, but... We've also got our home back, and Joanna's really helped us with that, and, the, I mean, it's just been brilliant. Tracy and Richard have done so well. I'm really pleased with their progress, and it's really good to see that the two of them have got the determination to carry on and, fingers crossed, keep their home clutter-free. Still to come, Anne ropes some mark into some serious decluttering. 
for years I've been telling her that she needs to get rid of some stuff and stop hoarding so much. And Anne doesn't want to disappoint. Curtis is going to be here soon. I hope and pray that he's happy with everything he sees. Near Newcastle, Marianne and Curtis have been helping teacher Anne strip her garage of items inherited from her dad and declutter her bedroom. I might be getting rid of that. Well, yeah, because then you've got a better space, haven't yeah. you? Anne now has a clear plan to carry on ruthlessly clearing one item out at a time. Today is DD, the day that we get rid of all of my clutter and the day I get my house back and my garage. I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't a little bit anxious, but also quite excited to get the spaces cleared. I should have done it years ago, really. Anne's asked her son Mark to help out. He's more ruthless than I am. He's like the push I need. Plus, he's quite strong, so he can help shift things. So what we're doing? Right, Marianne said I need a box to keep, box for charity, box to sell. It's basically really just getting rid of the, like, you jump first and then getting down to the clean and whatever, isn't it? Yeah. A little angel Christmas decoration, but it is broken, so that can go in the bin. Be in bin. Yeah. I don't need to have had for years. So get rid of that. For years, I've been telling her that she needs to get rid of some stuff and stop hoarding so much. Uh, so basically, I'm just here to help her get rid of some clutter and get her house back normal. I've already got the worst coat hangers going to charity. Careful, you didn't want to, <laughs> didn't want to give them too much, you know? That should be in downstairs in the medicine cabinet, but it's probably out of date anyway. Oh, that's right. Oh, did by you uh, in a bit. Isn't so, not too bad. <laughs> and that's another hat. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'll never wear it again. Charity? <laughs> yeah, we'll give it a charity. <laughs> <laughs> After some hard work and tough decision making, Anne and Mark are making progress. That's the charity bag there, and unfortunately, that's the keep box with the most stuff in it. Which is overflowing. <laughs> well, sort of. They've just kind of, the boxes just kind of give up on us. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, dear. Come on, then. They've made headway in the bedroom, but still have the garage to tackle. And Curtis has one of the treasures from that garage he's hoping to sell, Anne's leather scrapbook. Thanks for looking at this, Derek. Now, the lady that owned this didn't even know she had it. Really? Right. It came That's... from her father's family. Well, what a lovely find. It's beautiful. Um, lovely design. The Queen Elizabeth on the front here, 1953 coronation. Wonderful. And I think the fact that they've, whoever it is, has put this into a, a leather binder like this makes it extra special. What do you think the market's like for items like this? Well, I'll have to be honest with you here. I think there's not a huge market for this. There's not a great deal of people that are interested in royalty and royal things. Like they used to be. Like they used to be. So yeah. is it something you could be interested in buying off of me for the right price? It would depend on the price, yes. OK. Um, Let's talk money. Right. Shall I be bold and can we agree on £20? Uh, you could agree on £20 and, yes, I would give you £20 for it, yes. Right, well, let's shake hands on £20, if Absolutely. we may, sir. Absolutely, yes, of Marvellous. Yeah. Marvellous indeed. And that's another £20 for Anne. At home, she's about to tackle the garage. I'm feeling a little intimidated by it at the moment because there's so much of it and I don't know what a lot of it is. So, where to start? Luckily, son Mark is still here to help. I need to get this waxed up, cos Curtis said that it was a coffin stool. Right. And it uh, might be worth 20, 30 quid. Champion. So I'm going to get the top waxed and clean up the legs and everything. You I wish I'd wave a magic wand and it would all be gone. Oh, no, that would be nice. We've heard that one before. So while Mark carries on the declutter, Anne sets to waxing the coffin stool. Out. Out. Go. That is improving it. Once the stool's had a good going over, Anne has a phone call to make. 
An exciting find in the garage was some of her dad's architectural drawings. She wants to donate them to a local museum. It would be great if the museum takes it because I might even be able to get them to acknowledge my dad and his name would be there forever then. And there would be a little piece of my dad in new uh, beams and I would be bragging about that and telling everyone how proud I was that my dad's stuff was in Beamish Museum. Hiya, Julian. I was just wondering if you would like donation. Architectural drawings that my dad or his dad has drawn. Shall I bring them to you? Right, excellent. It's great news for Anne. So that would be brilliant. I would say, we donated that. It's a good result. And with a final push, Anne and Mark fill the van with boxes for charity, for sale, for recycling and the tip. Oh, Mark has been such a help. He's just been really, really useful today and really supportive as well. It's been very tiring, I have to say, because we've never stopped all day. But we now have spaces where we didn't before. And I'm now going to be able to relax in my bedroom tonight when I go to bed. And I feel like that's a job almost done. Just a little bit of hoovering to do now. And I feel fantastic. And finally, it's time to wave goodbye to all the unwanted clutter from the bedroom and extraneous bric-a-brac from the garage. In Glasgow, Curtis has one final item of Anne's to sell that newly polished up coffin stool. He's heading back to see dealer Joe at the antiques market. This is your thing, is it? No. Nah. I didn't think it would be. Nah. Not very Thanks good anyway, mate. Well, I thought I'd drop it. Yeah, maybe try Andy. Maybe Andy, Andy or Jim, maybe be interested in it. Right, I'll give it a try. Nee bora. Cheers. Hmm, any sign of life for the coffin stool? Right, Andy or Jim. Andy or Jim. Packing up, fellas. Yeah, don't blame you. No deal. Today, anyway. It's the end of the day. I'm taking this home. A month later, Anne is getting ready for a visit. Curtis is going to be here soon. I hope and pray that he's happy with everything he sees. Today, I just want them to see how different it is and how different I am. And just has some last minute adjustments to make. Curtis has arrived to catch up on her progress and to let her know about the money he's raised. Let's have a look at this bedroom then. Come on in. Two and a half months ago, Anne's home and garage were full of items inherited from her dad and household clutter. Her bedroom was full of old books, broken mementos and redundant clothes. But now the room is tidy and well organised and Anne can walk to her bed without tripping over anything. Blimey. Now there's a job well done. I got spurned on by you guys. It gave us the kick that I needed. Yeah, it's a proper sanctuary now, isn't it? It is, that's what I wanted. I've got a plan to mm. get the rest of the house done as well. You it's... really have bitten the, bitten the bullet here, haven't you? Oh, yeah. It's taken a monumental effort, but all that work has been worth it to create a comfortable bedroom. And all that hard slog is clear to see in the garage, too. Before, the whole space was filled to the brim with dusty collections inherited from Anne's dad. Now the garage has been stripped back and tidied. Now that's what I call an emptier garage. Yes. That's better. You can walk almost to the back of the garage now. I see, that just feels better, doesn't it? I know it's a garage, but you've got your motorbike. So at least it's got a home now that it can live in. Yeah. So what's the plan now? I mean, there's still a bit the of stuff in here. The plan now is, yep. A lot of it's going to go to the tip. You've, you're a different woman. You're a changed person. Where's the Anne I met? What's happened to her? Have you got rid of her? Goodbye to that Anne. So the advice Marianne gave you, you're yep. actually keeping up. I am. Blimey, that's excellent <laughs> news. Anne, with the help of her son Mark, has made a huge effort to clear out nine bags for charity, six sacks for recycling, five bin bags for the tip and six boxes with items to sell. I think you've done a cracking job so far in this house. Long may that continue, eh? Definitely. I did sell a few bits for you, and I've made just shy of £40 on it so far. But 
that might not be the end. There's work in progress and there's still some stuff to sell. Anne has two old rental pairs she hopes to sell and add to that cash for clutter total. But it's not just about the money. Her cluttered house has been cleared and cleaned into a comfortable and tidy home which she can relax in. We've got a little bit of cash so far. Yep. And hopefully a little bit more to come. But you know, I kind of get the impression here this isn't about the money. No, it's not. It's about something else, isn't it? Yeah. It's more about letting go of the past. So if your dad was sitting there, what would he say about this whole process? I mean, he just wants us to be happy. So I'm sure he, if it makes me happy, he would be happy. Well, that house looks a million times better. Garage is clearer, the house looks better, and Anne seems so much happier. OK, we didn't make a fortune, we made a little bit of money. But it was never about that. You know what, though? Every little helps. <laughs>